Hey y'all, welcome back. Today I'm going to be taking you back to February of last year. This is when I was doing my Valentine's pre-orders last year. This was before I started making classes and videos full time when I was still doing a few cookie orders. And I just want to walk you through a little bit of that pre-order process. So I filmed a little bit in my car after I dropped off my boys. Um, just to give you a little glimpse of kind of the day-to-day -day of what it was like for me running a home bakery and what it was like when I was getting those pre-orders planned and those samples made. So I'm going to take you into my car, excuse my messy hair, and we'll get started. Okay y'all, I am headed out leaving my mother-in-law's house. I just dropped off my boy and I'm fixing to head to the house and get started on some Valentine's Day samples. Um, Valentine's Day is about three, four weeks away. Today is January the, gosh, what is today? January the 12th. <laughs> Today's January the 12th. So I'm getting started with some samples. Um, normally I would have ordered some cookie cutters about a week or two before, but I just decided to use the cookie cutters I had this year because it's just been a crazy year and I'm trying to stop spending so much money on cookie cutters. Can anyone relate to that? Tell me in the comments if you just ignore the number that you spend on cookie cutters. That's what I did for a long time and sometimes it's so tempting to do. Um, <laughs> but anyway, I am planning on doing like some little bouquets and I like to do the little cake board bouquets. Um, so I think I'm going to do some of those. I had a lot of success at Mother's Day with the cake board bouquets where I glued the cookies onto the cake board using royal icing. So I think I'm going to try those again. Uh, just because that was a really successful month for me last year when I was looking back at my totals for the year and I'm gonna do the cookies on a stick that go down in the little buckets as bouquets as well and then I'll probably sell some individual cookies on a stick um, or just some individual bagged cookies it seems like at Christmas the cookies on a stick didn't sell as well as the just plain cookies in a bag which I, I get that they were a little bit more expensive so the stick really doesn't make that much of a difference um, so I'm going to start by making some dough. I'm going to take y'all with me as I clean my kitchen, um, which is going to be kind of an odyssey because we live in our house and our kitchen's a disaster. And I keep saying, oh, I'm going to set up a Monday night routine so that on Tuesdays when I'm working, I'm going to have this spotless kitchen as soon as I walk into the house. But it hasn't happened yet. And with a husband and twin two-year-olds, it's just like you do what you can and keep it as clean as you can but it still ends up having some stuff you have to move and get out of your way um, before you start making that dough so I'm gonna make a double batch of vanilla dough and then I'm gonna make a few single batches of my chocolate red velvet and coconut dough because I want to do like some sample boxes of different flavors kind of like um, a cookie version of a box of chocolates that's something kind of inexpensive that people can kind of tack on to their existing orders if they want to and something that I can sell in my classes because those last a really long time. They're really yummy and they look so pretty. I love having the all-white icing on top and then you turn the little bag where all the cookies are over and you have all these different pretty colors. Um, so typically my pre-orders will start a week or two before the holiday because I like to block off like the week before the week of pickup. I don't like to be finishing up all those, or well I'm going to be finishing them up, but I don't like to be starting my orders the week of pickup since cookies last four to six weeks in those heat sealed bags that I use to seal them up. I usually kind of try to get a little bit more of a jump start on it and I'm trying to do better this year about not being so last minute and having to stay up all night and all that junk so I am starting very early with my pre-order that way I'm not um, having to stress about it too much the week of because I am hosting a lot more classes now those are just more profitable for me um, and they're less space taken up in my kitchen 
which is really nice with a family of four. So um, I want to make sure that I have everything accounted for and planned for and I have plenty of time to mark it. So I'm pulling into my driveway and I'm going to take y'all with me as I clean up my kitchen, kind of fast forward through getting my dough made and I'll check back in shortly. So as I'm cleaning up the kitchen, I'll just tell you a little bit about the pre-order process I go through. Um, the way I did it, I always made my samples a few weeks ahead of time and took some really pretty pictures of them, kind of tried to show them in and out of the packaging. Like I would do a few pictures with them in the packaging and a few pictures where they're not in the packaging. That way people can kind of see them better. Um, both ways and then I would offer what I usually did a jot form or a google form with jot form it'll allow you to accept payment within the form so you can do that there's a way on a Wix website that you can accept payment um, for an order but that's a little bit more of an in-depth process and then you have to go and remove those products off your site so a jot form always worked really well for me when it came to pre-orders and so that's usually what I did. I would make my samples like I'm doing here today. I would make up enough dough just to make those samples. And I always tried to block out a week um, sometime during the month where I had fewer, um, if not no, custom orders. I think at this point in the year I had already stopped taking custom orders and I was just starting to take only the pre-orders and holiday orders, things like that because I was kind of getting into more online classes and making videos so at this point I didn't have any custom orders so I always just tried to kind of make my calendar in a way that allowed me to have time to do this sample making, photographing, getting my order form made, all that kind of thing. Now at the end of the video, I'm going to share a little bit more about the course that I'm coming out with next week. It's launching on Tuesday, the 18th of next week. It's called Cookie Career. Um, and I'm going to walk you through the whole process of beginning to sell or get serious about selling and growing your cookie business. So all the things that I'm talking about here today, planning, um, some of the more business side of things like your website things like that are going to be covered in that course and like I said you'll learn more about that later on but here I'm just picking out the cookie cutters that I'm going to use I went through and kind of chose the ones that I wanted or thought that I wanted to use and laid them out in the boxes I had because I had some boxes left over from some other pre-orders had to have my Netflix going in the background of course um, but I wanted to see that they would fit and make sure they looked okay and I took pictures that way I would remember kind of what my thought process was and I started just cutting out a few of those that way I could start kind of experimenting um, I would love to be one of those people who is um, organized enough and can plan enough that I could just draw out my pre-order samples of what I want but I'm kind of the my process is more get the popping bag out and see what looks good or just kind of see what happens with it. Here I'm putting some sticks into the cookies that I'm baking because those are going to go into some styrofoam in a little bucket. I bought some things at the Dollar Tree to help me package those up. But I just bake the sticks right into those and it makes these really cute cookies on a stick that you can use to make bouquets or different types of gifts. And I found that my customers really enjoyed those. Those were some of my best selling cookies anytime I did a pre-order or a pop-up. And when I say a pre-order, I guess I, this video is about pre-orders, so if you sell cookies, you know um, what a pre-order is. But it's just where you show your customers, like I said, some pictures, usually on social media, and ask what they would like to order ahead of time. And then you have a predetermined pickup date where they can come and get those cookies that they have ordered ahead of time. And this allows you to kind of know what your customers want, whereas with um, a pop-up shop, which would be where you make all the cookies ahead of time and just allow people to come and browse, this does kind of let you see exactly what is gonna be sold. There's not as much guesswork. 
So here I just picked out a color palette. You can see there a while ago I was mixing my icing and just mixed up a few different colors. I like to pick a one color palette and then make my cookies with whatever colors I have because if you start getting into too many colors, that can be frustrating on the week when you are actually making all these orders. Now, when I start marketing my pre-orders, I like to go live and show each option in its packaging and all that. This is still somewhere on my Instagram page if you wanna go scroll back and find kind of what that live looks like. But it seems like lives usually go further on Instagram and Facebook. So I always tried to make sure and do a live video, link to the form where people could order, whether that's a form or a website or you just want them to order by commenting, however you wanna do that. And I would just share a little bit about those, that way my customers would know um, a little bit about each one of the things I was offering. And I always try to do some different price ranges as well, like one that would be a little small gift. You know, when you're doing gift giving, you kind of think about different tiers of prices, maybe like a $3 gift, a $5 gift, a $10 gift, and maybe a 20 or a 30. So I would always try to make sure I had some kind of option in a few different price ranges. And of course, after I got all those orders, I always did my best to fulfill them and make sure everyone got what they needed and it was packaged and done well. Um, I think that's a big part of growing your business is just making sure that everything that goes out the door is really high quality. Thank y'all so much for watching today. I really appreciate it. If we haven't met before, I'm Sarah Grace. I teach creative people to make beautiful sugar cookies that sell. And in the next couple weeks, I'm going to be sharing more about a new course coming out. It's going to be launching next week on Tuesday. It's called Cookie Career, and this is for people who are cookie decorators and want to start decorating cookies for profit and for a business. So whether you've already started or you're planning to start, this will be really good and it'll help you um, feel confident in that process. So if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and thank you again for watching. Y'all have a great day.